This is Performance Theory with Mike Clark. They say that the answer to the if you could do anything question tells you what you're meant to do. Well, this season on Performance Theory, I asked my guests that $10 million question. Right after we finish taping this podcast, you find out you won $10 million on your lottery ticket. What do you do? The question says something about your passions and interests and what you'd be doing if you didn't have to worry about paying the bills and such. But most people struggle between the two. What is your purpose in life and what brings home a paycheck? A few years ago, I was struggling with this tension myself between my passion for helping people achieve their fitness and wellness potentials and my job that paid the bills, but didn't provide me with any fulfillment. The universe kept directing me and providing me with opportunities to live with reckless abandonment in pursuit of my dreams while my mind was telling me to be more responsible and stable. My thinking had to change. I needed to focus on what I loved doing rather than what I had to do. Moving from a guaranteed paycheck to co-founding my own company, Pure Wellness Studio, was, as Reid Hoffman says, like jumping off a cliff and assembling an airplane on the way down. There's velocity, time pressure, and you need to make something that will fly before you hit the ground. Ten years after I jumped off that cliff, I can say I've never looked back. It's been the most rewarding experience for me. It's more than just a business. It's more than just a job. It's my passion. I feel like I'm making a difference in the lives of my clients and putting content out through my social media feeds that can benefit an even larger audience. DJ Guzda, the co-founder of White Lion Athletics, tells us how $10 million would change his life. Dude, if I won $10 million, you want to talk about like Willy Wonka Chocolate Factory, like innovation, you would see it. It would be so deadly. It would be, yeah, like that's what I would do. And, and, I've, and I've often thought of that because like, that's not the first time I thought of it and no one's ever asked me, but I've, I've actually thought of that answer before. I'm like, well, what if I won a million bucks and I got put it back in the business, man? And then we're going to see... What like when you have innov- when you have innovation and passion that's not basically reined in by finances, dude, sky's the limit so long as you're smart. And I'd be like, oh man, it would be deadly. So yeah, that's exactly what I would do with it without a without a question. Serial entrepreneur, chiropractor, and founder of Connection Cafe and Pure Juice and Smoothie Lounge, Dr. Daryl Blackburn speaks about how his passion and dedication to his job is more than just a job. Same thing. I wouldn't change too much. Honestly, I'm too passionate about all the stuff that I do. Um, I would probably book a vacation um, after investing the majority of that money <laughs> into something. But uh, I, I wouldn't change too much. I, I genuinely do. I genuinely do love what I do. Um, I would book some extra travel, obviously. But uh, I remember I remember one one professor told me that he said, he said, if I won the lottery tonight, I would still come to teach tomorrow. He said, I'm not necessarily doing this just for money as much as it's good to make a living. I'm doing this because I enjoy it. And I, and I think that's what I do. I, I enjoy giving back. And like I said, there is some change on the horizon, but it's, uh, it's, it's just a bigger opportunity for me to give back. And um, lottery or not, I just want to help people and find ways to uh, travel more, I guess, while helping people. Along with continuing to invest and follow their passion, taking care of financial responsibilities and family are a common thread, as Spencer Sharp and Chris Little explain. So, you know, if I if I won the lottery, like, yeah, I would take care of my my my, my student debts and, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd retire my parents. But, you know, after that, I would go straight to working on something that's genuinely going to help millions of people. I would pay off my debts and then just act like nothing happened. <laughs> Pretty much, I, I have a client that's really good with uh, investing money. So he would be like my my dude that would invest my money into certain stocks. Um, I would just make sure that money was held responsibly. I would alleviate financial stress that I had on myself, but I would continue to grow as a trainer in the same capacity that I was right now i might i might well i i owe my parents a vacation i should take my parents on a vacation like totally without a doubt but i would not spend irresponsibly because what i am doing now i feel an incredible amount of fulfillment like if i could possibly train people for free and i know that sounds like cliche but i would and i think a lot of trainers would and it's just the fact that 
boys got to eat. Like, I need to pay bills. So at some point, you got to invoice them. Um, I always dream of a time when every podcast guest that I have, regardless of what region they're from, I would be able to do it in person. I, I could see it that maybe one day, maybe I had a podcast guest from New York and I would go to New York and I would see the sites and I would go and meet with them in their office to, to interview with them. Cause it's such a different experience to be like in their same space and in their same energy and really like actually connecting versus over the phone. And like, like even with my own podcast, if I do it over the phone, it's always a video call. Cause then you can really get like their body language and their facial expressions. And when they laugh, you can laugh too, but I'd be pretty much same, 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 just a little less uh, financial stress. Most teachers deal with a lot of job stress and they have to be very well prepared every day and they get very little downtime, especially when students are present. Many people think teachers have a good work schedule, but teachers take home a lot more work than other professionals. There's always lessons to plan, papers to grade, records to keep, and in addition, the pay isn't as much as it is compared to other professions with similar education requirements. And despite being one of the top 10 most stressful jobs, our guest Chris Rule explains what he would splurge on and if his passion for teaching would still have him walking in the classroom the next day. Going to work. You wouldn't change anything? Um, the only thing I would change is, um, as you know, I am a diehard, lifelong comic book geek. I would try and find that holy grail of comic books that has been eluding my collection for 40 years. <laughs> is it Action Comics? Action Comics, number one, would be a miracle to find and own. Um, that would be great. No, for me, it's Amazing Spider-Man number 50. First appearance of the Kingpin, classic bright red cover with Spider-Man looking over his shoulder as Peter Parker walks away from him. Spider-Man No More written on the cover. I have a copy, but I would like that mint copy. <laughs> Maybe there's nothing wrong with struggling between following your passion or following the paycheck. Maybe the real tragedy is not struggling at all. Either following your calling or compromising your dream for the sake of security. Maybe those of you that haven't jumped off that cliff and live responsibly are indeed missing out. What would you do if you could do anything? Let's try it for yourself. Sit down with a pen and paper and come up with 10 different strategies. Then sit a little longer and come up with 10 more. Give yourself at least 20 minutes. Then carry around that pen and paper for three days. Having asked the question, answers will pop into your head long after you thought you were done. Each of these strategies that you come up with is a choice point. Having found the road, you can turn right or left, upward or downward. It may not be easy to choose the unfamiliar path, but the first step is simply to recognize the choice. That's it, everybody. It's a wrap on season one. Look for season two coming September. We're going to have all new guests. And if there is any guests that you'd like us to feature on the podcast, I want you to reach out to me. Mike Clark Life is my social media handle on pretty much every single platform or you can reach out to me at mikeclarklife.com really want to thank every single person that's out there listening to the podcast and i will see you in september till next time